Whitehall, one, two, one, two, quickly. This is Scotland Yard. For the first time, Scotland Yard opens its secret files to bring you the authentic, true stories of some of its most celebrated cases. These are accurate records drawn from these files by special permission of Sir Harold Scott, Commissioner of Scotland Yard. They're true in every respect, except for the names of the participants, which, for obvious reasons, have been changed. The research has been done by Mr. Percy Hoskins, chief crime reporter for the London Daily Express. And the stories for radio are written and directed by Willis Cooper. New Scotland Yard, the London headquarters of the Metropolitan Police, is situate near the embankment on Whitehall, hard by 10 Downing Street and almost in the shadow of Big Ben. Here also is the headquarters of the CID, the Criminal Investigation Department, the body of men whose exploits for more than 100 years have made the name Scotland Yard synonymous with the brilliant detection of crime and unrelenting pursuit of the criminal and the presentation of the painstakingly acquired evidence that assures his eventual punishment. On the lower ground floor of New Scotland Yard is the famous Black Museum, where whose present custodian is Chief Superintendent James Davidson, a Scotland Yard veteran. Behind this door... Good afternoon. This Black Museum of ours is rather unique. Everything in it was at one time connected with the successful solution of a crime, or was closely involved in the crime itself. We possess an imposing collection of lethal weapons here, each carefully docketed to indicate its origin. Here are half-empty bottles of almost every poison known to man, together with a statement of particulars concerning its use. Here are the blood-stained garments on which the solution of a crime of violence depended. Among the Black Museum's relics are disguises used by famous criminals death masks of notorious men and women whose ends Scotland Yard encompassed, and a great many other more gruesome mementos of man's inhumanity to man. Among the exhibits are others seemingly incongruous objects that in their time served well in the undoing of desperate criminals. Such an exhibit is this one, the fragments of a set of teacups this collection of shards was the first step in the solution of a frightful crime which occurred during the Blitz of July 1940. Yes, sir? Would you please bring me file number 302-MR-651, Constable? 302-MR-651, uh, sir? Yes, sir. One, sir. In July 1940, the Battle of Britain was at its height. The Luftwaffe hits us at all hours. And from advanced defense fields of the RAF, the weary spitfires rose day and night to do battle. Thousands of British people died in Britain as a result of enemy action. But in the midst of the very present war, murder went on as usual. Chief Superintendent Peter Carruth received a telephone call at Scotland Yard on the morning of the 3rd of July, a Wednesday... Mars 302MR651, sir. Thank you. The call was from Chief Constable at Matfield, a Kentish village near Tunbridge. The Chief Constable reported the finding of the bodies of three women shot to death and requested the assistance of the CID. The services of Scotland Yard are available to the provincial police at all times if requested. The Home Office, assuming all expenses, if the request is made within 24 hours of the discovery of the crime at their own expense, if we're called in after that. Chief Superintendent Carruth was gratified that the request came at the very beginning of the case, and he drove to Matfield at once with a medical examiner from the Home Office and Detective Sergeant Small, also Scotland Yard. They were met at the scene of the crime by Matfield Chief Constable Thomas Bennett. It's good of you to come so quickly, all of you. It's all quite beyond his ears, sir. What with the blitz and all? I'm sure. I had a bad time. Having it, sir. Yes, I have no doubt. Those hours, Mr. Bennett. Spitfires. Jerry must be up again. 
Well, here's what happened. In the house, there's Miss Evans, the servant. Uh, is she dead? Two holes in her head. Yeah. Play, place all ransacked, all tore up. Where are the others? Mrs. Ames and her daughter Jessica's lying down there in the orchard. Also shot. Yes, I, I see. Where do we want to start, sir? Um, a house, I think, first. Yes. Yeah. Uh, come in, then, sir. Uh, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. They've lived here in Matfield a long time, have they, Bennett? And Miss Evans, the servant, has always lived here. Mrs. Ames and her daughter moved here a year ago. Mrs. Ames a widow? No. Estranged from her husband, though they're quite friendly. He lives at Pittington. Oh, yes, I know. I've been there. Owns a farm. Does he know about this? My station sergeant telephoned him this morning, sir. He was in London, but he'll be home this evening. Shall I uh, go first, sir? She's... Lying right by the door, and you might trip over her. By all means. You might arrive there. Uh, these is the not gentleman not from Scotland Yard, Constable. Yes, sir. Hey, this is her. Miss Margaret Evans, sir. Age 61. Servant. Living in. Ah. Oh. See what you can find out, Bernard. Right, Sir Small, get started looking for fingerprints. Yes, sir. Place has really been ransacked, hasn't it? Uh-huh. What's missing? I haven't checked yet, sir. I haven't touched anything. Good. Well, not much chance of finding out if anything is gone, though. Everybody that lived here is dead. I'd like to see the others. Right, sir. If you'll come with me. Oh, uh, what's that over there? Yeah. Tea things? Yes, sir. Looks as if she dropped the tray when she saw the murderer. Have a look at them, too, Small. All right, sir. Uh, down this part, sir. The orchard there, that's where they are. Mrs. Ames? And her daughter, Jessica. Mm. They have many visitors? Very few, sir. And the place is back from the road, isn't a bit by the roses. Hard to tell they do have. Here she is. This is the daughter, I suppose. Right, sir. Her mother's over there, off the path. Daughter was running away toward the house. Mother was facing the other way. Shot in the back, too. Aye. Found anything here in the grass? Cartridge cases, anything? Well, no, sir. Uh, we, we did find this glove, though, sir. Uh, sorry, I had it in my pocket. Almost forgot it. Oh, woman's glove. Size six, I'd say. Hogskin. Shop sells thousands a week. Left hand. Whose is it? Isn't Mrs. Ames, sir, too small? Or Miss Jessica's either. Uh, too large, I'd say, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yes, I think so. Uh, maybe the murderer, sir. We'll see. All you found? Oh, so far, sir. Mm. Where was the glove? Oh, over there, sir. I, I marked the spot with those uh, two sticks. Uh huh. Alongside the mother's body. Yes, sir. Well, as soon as Bernard's examined the bodies, I think you'd better have all this grass scythed down and see if you can find anything else. Cartridge case or anything. Yeah, right, sir. Shall we walk back to the house? Yes, sir. Good hunting, lad. Take a part. Talking to the fighter chap up there. Oh, oh, oh. Hope he shoots some Jerry's bloody ears off. He probably will. Got a son in the RAF, flight sergeant of the Coastal Command. Good man. Nineteen years old. When I was nineteen, I was a farm man for good old Uncle Tom Cobbler. Hey, I wonder if they found anything yet in there, sir. We'll see. Oh, here's Bernard. Anything yet? Well, I, uh, I want to see the other bodies first. Discovered a little so far. Uh, where are the... Um, uh... Down the path back there, sir. We've touched nothing. Except this glove. Oh, is this one of theirs? Wrong size. All right. Uh, you can remove the bodies as soon as I finish, Chief Constable. Yes, sir. I'll have the van here at once. Uh, see to it, please. Yes, sir. What are you doing, Small? I'm trying to fit these cups together, sir. Well, what about fingerprints? I wanted you... Well, I found a good many, sir. They all check with hers. Oh, how did you know they were hers? Oh, I took hers. I wish live people's were as easy to take. No others? Well, I'm not sure yet, sir. As soon as I get the others down there, I'll make a very thorough check. These cups and saucers. She dropped them when she saw the murderer, probably. Yes, quite. But why should there be four cups, sir? Four? One for the mother... One for the daughter, one for the maid, 
Uh -huh. Miss Evans was more a companion than a servant, sir. Here in Matfield, we... Ah, uh, ah, uh, yes. And one with the murderer. Why, then, they must have known the murderer. People don't usually offer a cup of tea to a perfect stranger. You could make up a list of their friends, Chief Constable, uh, and then... very few friends, sir. Kind of standoffish like they was, and... But the parson, the grocer, postmistress... More than a real close friend, so to speak. Make up a list and check where they all were yesterday. Yes, sir. What about this estranged husband of Mrs. Ames? Would he have a motive? Oh, I don't think so, sir. He used to come visit her, I know, but... Oh, he did, eh? And he's in London now, you said? I went down yesterday morning, they said, sir. Where does he live, do you say? Piddington, sir, near Oxford. Uh, you take over, Sergeant Small, you and Mr. Bernard. I'll call you from Piddington. Biddington, sir? Do you think... I that... think I'd like to know whether our friendly ex-husband was really in London yesterday or elsewhere. At Piddington, that afternoon, 70 miles away from Matfield... Jem Davies, the man of all work, explained to Chief Superintendent Carruth that John Ames had not yet returned from London. Miss Viola Masterson, the manager of the Ames farm, however, was at home, recovering from an accident. Carruth spoke to her in her sitting room. Her left arm was in bandages, and she was obviously in slight pain. Carruth sympathized with her. I'm so sorry to disturb you, Miss Masterson. It's quite all right. I'll be up and about in a day or so. It pains a little, though, now. I suppose you've heard about the former Mrs. Ames and her daughter. I'm so dreadfully sorry. I knew them slightly, you know. Oh, did you? I'd have gone over to Matfield if I hadn't been so stupid as to fall off my bicycle and injure my arm. I'm afraid I'm not a very good cyclist. Oh, do you have any clues as to the... the... Murderer? And very few at the moment. Very few, I'm afraid. Oh, what a pity. Mr. Ames went to London yesterday. Hmm? Yes. He was probably in London while his former wife and daughter were murdered. He often stops in to see them on his way. If he'd stopped there yesterday, he might have prevented it. Yes, yes. I suppose he can account for his movements yesterday. I'm quite sure he can, Superintendent. I expect him at any moment. You were here at the farm all day? I rode about the farm all day in my bicycle until I had the accident. Ah. I'm sure Jemmy Davis can confirm that. And the bicycle is still where I left it, where I fell off. Unless Jemmy's brought it back. I see. Uh, by the way, have you ever seen this glove before? Oh, let me see it. No, I'm afraid not. Did it belong to... We're not quite sure. Well, it's not mine. Much too big for me, I'm sure, Superintendent. You've never seen it before? Never. Thank you, Miss Masterson. Is that all you wanted? Aren't you going to wait for Mr. Ames? Oh, I don't like to disturb you, Miss Masterson. I'll wait out there with Jemmy. It is Jemmy, isn't it? Uh, by all means, talk to Jemmy. I'm sure he'll confirm everything I've said. Good day, Miss Masterson. You know where to find Jemmy? <laughs> he was sitting alongside the stable door cleaning a shotgun when I last saw him. Jemmy Davis was a simple-minded man. He didn't realize that he was talking much too freely to the friendly Scotland Yard man. Well, it'd, it'd be a terrible thing, I expect, but I don't shed no tears for him. I didn't like her nor her daughter, neither. Hated them? It'd be none of my business, sir. But now, Mr. Ames, uh, he'd be a real fine man. And she, uh, she treated him awful bad. How? Dug in the manger. Kicks him out, she does. And then when he finally meets a woman he loves, and that woman loving him, she won't give him no divorce. You seem to know a lot about Mr. Ames' affairs, Jemmy. Yeah. Him and me, we be just like that. I'd do anything for that man. Her too, for that matter. Who? Miss Marcheson. There. Well, that's pretty clean, ain't it? Let's see. <laughs> clean as I'd ever want a gun to be. <laughs> Had it for years. Old-fashioned, like me. <laughs> uh, but she'd be a good shotgun. He uses it all the time for rabbits. Mr. Ames? Well, buys his own shells, too. Hmm. Well, Miss Masterson, she's scared of it. Tried to teach her how to shoot it. But she was scared. 
<laughs> hey, you couldn't kill a person with this here gun, I says to her. Not unless you got up real close. Funny thing, though. She shot a rabbit with it yesterday. <laughs> you know, it made her so sick at her stomach when she shot the poor little fella. Never again, she says to me. <laughs> Did you see the rabbit, Jemmy? <laughs> well, what were left of it, she were too close. Well, not worth bringing back to cook. <laughs> you know, I think that's why she fell off her bicycle thinking about it. Where did she fall? Where well, she was in the meadow yonder. The wheel slipped on the grass. Jimmy, did you ever see this glove before? Huh? No, sir. No. Well, can't say as how I have. Sure? No, sir. Whose is it? I found it. Well, finders keepers. Uh, that's what they say. So you don't think Mr. Ames and Miss Masterson will be upset by Mrs. Ames' death? Lord bless you, no, sir. Now they can get married. Well, that dog in the manger wife of his. Well, he must have been the last one to see her alive. Oh? How's that? When he stopped us here on the way to London yesterday. Why, I thought you was going to wait for him to come back, sir. Chief Superintendent Carew hurried to the local police station where he put through a trunk telephone call to Matfield. Detective Sergeant Small, the Scotland Yard man, answered the telephone at the murder house. Small here. Small, I want you to check at once on something. Yes, sir. I want you to make the most diligent inquiries. Get that chief constable there to inquire of every person in Matfield, if necessary, at once, to discover if this man Ames was seen in Matfield yesterday. You got that? He was seen, sir. He was? Postman, sir. We've been making inquiries all over the village of Mrs. Ames' known friends, and we've come across several curious things, sir. Well? Well, the, the postman observed Mr. Ames walking toward this house yesterday afternoon. He's sure? We positively identified him, sir. Known him for years. Spoke to him, called him by name, and Ames replied. What else? He was carrying a shotgun, sir. Oh. I discovered here that he intended to visit them. But the gun... Well, looks as if he's our man, doesn't it? What else did you discover? Well, the bicycle belonging to Mrs. Ames is missing. Oh? And the porter at the railway station reports a strange woman carrying a parcel arrived in town yesterday, but so far we have been unable to trace her. Now, the local police have picked up a deserter from an army camp near here. He's being questioned now. Oh. Uh. Then a lorry driver for the gas company at Oxford reports picking up a woman on the highway near here yesterday afternoon. She was wearing one glove. Oh? Now, he thinks her bare hand was scratched and bleeding. Yes? She explained she'd fallen off her bicycle and was trying to catch a train. He took her to the railway station. And then... Well, what did you say, sir? I didn't say anything. Oh, I was speaking to Dr. Bernard, sir. I'll put him on. He wants to speak to you. Thank you. You there, Carruth? Yes, Bernard. I've discovered why you didn't find any spent cartridges, Superintendent. Yes? The women were killed with a shotgun, probably a 410 shotgun. Yes, yes, I know. The uh, murderer had to pick the discharged shell out of the breech of the gun by hand. Yes, but... It... And probably carried them away and disposed of them elsewhere. Did you recover any of the shot from the bodies? Yes, quite small pellets, uh, bird shot. Mark it in evidence and hold it for me. I think those little lead pellets are going to hang someone, Bernard. Back at the Piddington farm, Chief Inspector Carew found that Ames had returned in his absence. Jemmy, the garrulous man of all work, was just leaving. He was going to fetch Miss Masterson's abandoned bicycle, he I said. I be going out to fetch Miss Masterson's bicycle, sir. Look here, Jemmy. Would you like a half a crown? What for? That rabbit Miss Masterson shot. Is it near where she left the bicycle? Oh, fur long or two, sir. Fetch it back for me. What for, sir? Well, it's been fit to eat. She were too close. Oh, I've a fancy to see how that gun of yours works, Jim. Oh, that old gun of mine? Uh, she be a very good gun, sir. Show me. Here. Well... Good man. Now, is Mr. Ames in the house? Aye, right, sir. Now, I'll, I'll fetch the rabbit and show you. But the poor thing will be all full of birdshot, sir. That'll be all right, Jimmy. I'm very interested in birdshot.
Yes. I'm Chief Superintendent Carruth of Scotland Yard. You're John Ames, hmm? Yes. Now, you're the gentleman who was here this afternoon. Yes. May I come in? Do. You've come about the murder of my wife and daughter? Yes. I'm sorry, Mr... Carruth, you said? Yes. I cannot pretend any great grief, although I am shocked at the tragic. May I sit down? I, um, I spoke to Miss Masterson, your manager, this afternoon. She said you were here. Perhaps if Miss Masterson is strong enough... Here I am. Oh, sit down, my dear. Please, sit down. Don't hurt my hand, John. I'm all right. Well, sir? Am I correct in assuming that, uh, with the death of Mr. Ames and strange wife, you and he... We can be married, yes. Mr. Ames? That is true. My wife has consistently refused to give me a divorce. Although we were on fairly good terms... She and, and... I weren't. I'm glad she's dead. Violet, And yes. that horrid daughter of hers, too. Now we're rid of them once and for all. Violet. Do you share Miss Masterson's views, Mr. Ames? I... I'm afraid... Well, perhaps he's not as ferocious as I am, but he shares my views all right. Don't you, John? I... Yes. And what were you doing with a shotgun on the way to our home yesterday, Mr. Ames? John, you didn't... You didn't... Mr. Ames! You, you didn't tell me. Oh, John! John, now you spoiled everything. Your wife and your daughter were murdered with a shotgun, Mr. Ames. I didn't do he it. He didn't, he didn't, I say. What gauge is your shotgun, Mr. Ames? This is absurd, Mr. Yes, of course it's why absurd. Do you, why do you think it's absurd? My dear sir, my gun, which incidentally is an American-made Remington over and under 12 gauge, has been broken for four weeks. You see? Broken? The sear spring is broken. It's quite impossible to fire the gun. You can examine the gun at your leisure at Henny McGovern's The Gunsmiths on High Horburn in London, where I took it yesterday. We'll check that. Why did you visit your wife yesterday, carrying your broken gun? I dropped off in Matfield on my way to London to have the gun repaired. I begged her again to give me a divorce. She refused? She refused again. <laughs> for the last time. And we're going to be married now at last. Don't expect us to weep for her. Whoever killed her should be given a medal. Viola. Oh, stop it. You're just as glad as I am. Aren't you? Excuse me. The telephone. Yes? Yes, he's here. One moment. It's for you, Mr. Carew. Thank you. Chief Superintendent Carruth here. Small here, sir. We found Mrs. Ames' missing bicycle. Oh. Yes, sir. It was discovered in a ditch close to the place where the lorry driver picked up the woman with one glove. Oh, good. And there are numerous fingerprints on the handlebar, sir, but of the right hand only. Most interesting. And the strange woman whom the railway reporter observed was uh, carrying a parcel, you remember? Yes, yes, of course. Well, it was a, a long parcel about the length of a gun, he says, wrapped in brown paper. I see. Have you taken the things you spoke about? The things, sir? Yes. Oh, all the, the fingerprints on the bicycle? Yes, quite. Yes, sir, I've taken them. How soon could I see them and the people you spoke of? Up there, sir? Yes. Well, there's an up train that we can have stop at Pittington, leaving here in half an hour, sir. I think you'd better come, then, if you can find the others you mentioned. I'll meet you at the Pittington station. Right, sir. Goodbye. I'm very sorry. Could I ask? You have uncovered some other evidence, sir? You're not going to arrest John, then? He won't be charged with murder? I think I can almost assure you that you will not be charged with murder, Mr. Ames. I'm sorry, I, I, I must go and meet my colleagues. This is quite important. Will you be coming back? I probably shall. I, I shall want to be able to assure Mr. Ames that he will not be held. Oh, John. <laughs> The Scotland Yard man still here, Mr. Ames? Why, uh... I'm here, Jamie. Well, I, I fetch you the dead rabbit, sir, with your half crown's worth of birdshot. They met him at the railway station two hours later. 
Detective Sergeant Small, Chief Constable Bennett, the lorry driver who had picked up the woman with the bloody hand and the one glove, and the railway porter who had observed the woman carrying the brown paper parcel the size of a gun. Leaving Chief Constable Bennett at the station to make a telephone call, the party proceeded to the Ames Farm. Oh. Good evening, Mr. Carruth. May we come in, please? Why, this is quite a delegation. May we come in, please? Why, I suppose... <clears throat> Do come in, although... Thank you. Where's Miss Masterson? Viola? Yes, dear. Why, what... Uh, Miss Masterson, do you recognize any of these people? Why? Why, no, of course not. Patterson, do you recognize this woman? Hey, she's the lady in blue slacks I picked up my lorry on the road in Matfield yesterday. The lady that said she fell off her bike. Her hand was all bloody and she had one glove on. Like this one? Yes, sir. Exactly like that. O'Connor. Yes, sir? Have you ever seen this lady before? I seen her yesterday, sir. Getting off the 1206 train that passes through Piddington before it gets to Batfield. She was wearing blue slacks and carried a brown paper parcel about the size of a gun, sir. Now, look here. What's the meaning of all this? Come in. Well, Bennett. Just like you thought, sir. I telephoned the doctor who treated Miss Masterson, and he informs me that he... Treated her left hand for multiple lacerations, removing particles of road gravel and stains of tavia from the palm. Miss Masterson, there is no gravel or tavia at the meadow. Thank you. Mr. Ames, I'm extremely sorry for you. John, now we won't get married. Viola Masterson, I arrest you on the charge of willful I murder. I wanted to get married and she's... And I must John. warn you that anything I you say will be taken down and may be used in evidence against you. John, what have I done? The evidence adduced by Chief Superintendent Carruth, the identifications by the lorry driver and the railway porter, the shotgun pellets which proved identical with those Miss Masterson had fired into the unfortunate rabbit, the glove which was identified as hers by the store which had sold it to her, the gravel from the road in her wounded hand, and the motive, which was all too plain, proved sufficient evidence to convict Viola Masterson of the murders of Mrs. Ames and her daughter and of the servant, Margaret Evans, who provided the first clue, the fourth cup. Miss Masterson had determined to murder the servant to eliminate the only witness to the murder of the others. In a trial marked with frequent air raid alarms caused by an enemy whose depredations could not prevent murder from going on as usual, she was found criminally insane and is now imprisoned in the asylum at Broadmoor. John Ames was tried as an accomplice but acquitted he joined the 1st Battalion of the Bats and was reported missing in action in the Italian campaign. Constable, you may turn the file 302-MR651, the Blitz murder case, to the records room. Good afternoon. You've just heard the first case in the series Whitehall 1212, drawn from the official files of Scotland Yard by permission of Commissioner Sir Harold Scott. All names were changed in this story for obvious reasons, but everything else is true. It occurred. Whitehall 1212 is written and directed for radio by Willis Cooper. Next, listen for Tales of the Texas Rangers on NBC.